All right, here's our RLC circuit. Again, everything is in series. My resistance is 250 ohms. The inductor has a inductance of 0.8 Henry. Capacitance is 2.22 microfarad. And our voltage source has an RMS voltage of 440 volts. Now careful, that's RMS voltage, that's not the peak. But we can clearly calculate the peak if you're given RMS. So uh, question A says, what is the angular frequency for resonance in this circuit? That was our omega zero value. Omega zero value is related to our inductor and the capacitance. That's it, you just plug and chug. Pretty straightforward. Uh, 0 0.8 multiply 2.22 times 10 to the minus 6. Plug in all our numbers, I think you get 750. And that's in radians per second. All right, that's A. How about B? B says draw a phasor diagram. Okay, and again, remember we're at resonance here. Something happens when you're at resonance is that the maximum voltage or the amplitude across the inductor has to be equal to the amplitude across the capacitor. And that means that the reactance of the inductor has to be equal to the reactance of the capacitor. And as a result, you get some simplifications in our equation for the total impedance of the circuit. It simply reduces to the total resistance. All right, so we have to use this information. And now let's draw the axes for our phasor diagram. Let's just draw the vectors. We'll calculate their magnitudes in just a moment. But it means we have a voltage across our resistor, which can be in this angle. We also have the voltage across the inductor. It's going to have some magnitude. Now the maximum is going to be over here. And the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage lags. So it's shifted by 90 degrees with respect to the resistor. That's the voltage across the capacitor. All right, now how do we get, or how do we simplify this system, or how do we calculate all of these magnitudes? Let's start with the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor, well, it's simply our maximum value multiplied by the resistance. How do I get the maximum current? Well, or how do I get the voltage across the resistor? Remember, since we have this condition, that VL equals to VC, um, that means that uh, the voltage across they're going to be 180 degrees out of phase here, just like in the figure. So that means that this voltage across the resistor, and since the impedance equals to the resistance, you can write it as something like this, the maximum multiplied by the impedance. Just substitute here. And this guy over here is simply equal to the voltage across the AC source. And we know what its RMS value is. So all we have to do now is calculate the peak. Oh, and again, here I should really just be writing the maximum value. I'm sorry for that. Okay, so our maximum value is related to the RMS value. It's square root of two times the RMS value. So here we get square root of two multiplied by 440. And at the end, the voltage across the resistor ends up being 620 volts. You can go ahead and put that on our diagram here. That's the maximum voltage across the resistor. Now to get the maximum voltage across the inductor and the capacitor, again, you simply note that they're the same. All right, let's just start with uh, V sub C. That equals to our maximum current uh, multiplied by the reactance of our capacitor. All right, reactance of the capacitor you can calculate. And again, the current, the maximum current, again, you can also use our voltage across the inductor, which is the maximum current multiplied by the reactance of uh, the inductor. So uh, at the end of the day, what you can do is you can simplify all of these things. So the first term here becomes I max is simply the maximum voltage. Uh, divided by the impedance and our reactance for the capacitor is 1 divided by omega 0 multiplied by the capacitance. Okay, now I think we know all the values here. 
E max is square root of two multiplied by what we just found by 440. Right? And I know what omega zero is and I know what the capacitance is. So at the end, if you simplify all the numbers here, uh, what you're gonna end up getting is that the voltage across the capacitance, which equals to the voltage across the induction is 1500 volts. So check that out for yourself. So that means this guy here is 1500 volts. And also the voltage across the capacitance down here is also 1500 volts. All right, so that's uh, what the phasor diagram looks like at resonance. All right, let's move on to uh, RMS voltages now. They ask for RMS voltages between the various points. And keep in mind, this is RMS, it's not peak. Okay, so if you're looking for RMS voltages, you also want to know what RMS current is, and that's going to help you in all our calculations. So let's go ahead and calculate what the RMS current is. Again, it's related to the peak, and it's related to the RMS uh, voltage of our AC source. It's given by Ohm's law, right? Again, we're looking at, at resonance for all of these uh, different calculations. So Ohm's law for this circuit is RMS uh, divided by uh, the total impedance, which at resonance is simply equal to the resistance. So you simply get 440 divided by 250 ohms. We should get an RMS current of 1.76 amps. Again, RMS, not peak. So let's find the voltage now between points A and B. Let's call that VAB. That is simply the voltage across this resistor. And again, we're doing everything in RMS quantities. So that means it's the RMS current going through that resistor multiplied by the resistance. That's pretty straightforward. In this case, it's simply gonna be equal to 440. <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, the voltage across uh, the inductor, that's BC. The voltage across the inductor, the RMS voltage is RMS current, multiplied by the reactance of the inductor. All right, the reactance of the inductor, we can calculate, we know what omega zero is, we know what the induction is. If you plug this in your calculator, you should get 1100 volts. All right, what about the voltage across CD? Uh, the voltage across CD, again, you should get the same thing, <laughs> all right? Because our reactances are the same at resonance. So RMS multiplied by this must be equal to the same. Again, there's simply a phase factor between them. All right, what if they ask you, so I didn't draw that one on the diagram, it was getting a little crowded, but in the problem in the book, it's the voltage from point B all the way to point D, what would you measure? Keep in mind, if you think about the phasor diagram, right, we get a voltage that is 90 degrees ahead for BC and a voltage that is 90 degrees, that, that lags by 90 degrees, right? So both of these voltages across the inductor and across the capacitor are 180 degrees out of phase. So what you have to end up doing is add voltage across BC, but then subtracting the voltage across CD. So you get zero volts if you simply measure from point B all the way to point D. All right, and the last one, uh, what if you measure this orange one here across this entire network? That's an easy one. The voltage across points A and D. The voltage across points A and D also has to be equal to the RMS voltage of the source, which in this case is 440 volts. And again, all of these are RMS values. All right, choice D says, what if the resistor is replaced with a value that's smaller now? It's only 125 ohms. They ask, what is the new resonance of this circuit? What is the new omega zero? Think about this for a minute. Well, omega zero, remember what our formula was? It was one over LC. Actually, this here's the same. Right, we still have to have 750 radians per second. 
Changing the resistance doesn't change the resonance condition of this circuit. That's an important point. How about E on the other hand though? E says, what is the RMS current now? Well, think about RMS current. That's what we did previously over here. The RMS current was this value. We're not changing the AC source. This is still being driven by 440 volts. However, what are we doing? We're reducing the impedance. We're reducing the impedance, which in this case is only a resistive part. We're reducing it from 250 to 125. So that means that we're going to increase the RMS current. So the new RMS current by reducing the uh, resistance. Again, if you reduce the resistance by two, you're going to increase uh, the current by two. So you get 440 divided by 125 ohms. This here is going to give me 3.56 amps. Well, this is kind of a good problem. It involves a little bit of everything. Good problem for RLC circuits uh, being driven at, re at the resonant frequency.